you. And then it skips back again. To quickly replay all those events from another perspective. Showing the coercion, physical abuse, and gang rapes that went on behind the scenes. Really? It's an interesting storytelling choice, but a wrong one. Because we are coming to this narrative second. The first still is prime position in our memories. Although the device seems meant to suggest we don't know the real story, it actually implies there are two equally valid scenarios. Amanda Seyfried though, is a revelation as Linda Lovelace. There's something about losing all that straight flaxen hair. She's a permed brunette through most of this. That strips away her usual ingenue persona. She's naked! But in a purely emotional way. Unarmored and unarmed. Of course, she's near, She's literally naked too. A lot. Um, is there a point to the story eventually? The point is now. We just read the point. The point is that she did not do these things consensually. No, it's behind. The, uh, According it, to her. No. No. She was forced. In other By words, her lover, in other Mr. words, Trina. she did not seek out a career in the adult film industry or pornography. He encouraged her, corrupted her, so to speak. Uh, and there is the story that he did it with a gun. And she did not leave him... Um, or report him to the police or anything like uh No. Yeah. But it's her vulnerable, damaged, eager to please hunger that really impresses. And it's at its most achingly sad in her scenes with Peter Sarsgaard as the husband who's really just a pimp. Yeah. Yep. The protector whose only true concern is protecting his valuable investment. There were two crucial turning points in Lovelace's life. Her initial enslavement to her husband and her eventual emancipation as a woman. And both remain not just unexplained, but unexplored. But do give Seafried and Sarsgaard full credit. She for showing her new depth as an actress, and he for reconfirming that slippery, sneaky power he always had. Now, my question is, how naked can she be etc. in such a film when it's only rated R. R? R. R? It's, both, it's for pirates. R. 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 Okay? Yes, it's, it's a movie for pirates. Yeah. I don't get it. What? How could it be R if it was... If, so they well, didn't, you're they, surely not going to see any deep throating, so I will say that. So there's no, there was no full penetration? Obviously Being not. Yeah, it's crap. <laughs> crap. <laughs> By today's standards in the porno industry, it's 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 crap. Exactly. People that watch porn are not going to care. Well, about you know, this uh, nonsense. The the real the real um, let's say what Linda Lovelace represents in this world other than her personal story, etc., yeah. was that at that time yeah. 
that was the biggest grossing porn movie of all time. And that particular movie, when the, the Love Lace, Deep Throat, and uh, The Devil and Miss Jones, yeah. and Behind the Green Door. These three movies, early in the 70s, were a a wanting for porn to actually go mainstream <laughs> and for a couple of years sure. it worked because they had decent actors and actresses along with the sex but the storyline the acting were better quality exactly is what you're saying exactly but that didn't last the, long the music no 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 <laughs> because the audience they just want to see the sex that's it you know um so today that's what they do they just they just pump them out today sex 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 no story no nothing baba boom boom baba dee boom boom Quantity over quality, etc., etc. But that's what the viewer wants, so that's what he's got. Um. Okay. So that little wish to legitimize never made it, and that's why you uh, you sometimes bring up the uh, story of uh, what's her name? The Tracy Lords. Tracy Lords, who wanted to try to go to legit, but never. No, made she's typecast. She, same thing with horror movie actresses. Oh, speaking of, I want to uh, have a moment of silence for the uh, sad passing away of uh, a horror movie a legend, uh, Karen Black. Oh, yeah. Karen Black died. Also, uh, Airplane. That wasn't she, horror, per yeah. se. No, but she was, she was in a lot of movies. Remember the, the first Air Airplane movie. Yeah, remember Trilogy of Terror? She went nuts in there. Ah! Yeah, you remember Trilogy of she Terror? Was, she's one of the we call a screamer. Well, she had a very unique pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. Stare. She had, nobody had the stare that she had. The, the I can't put my finger, I can't describe it, but she had a, um, she's a, she's a, a very attractive woman. Uh, but Karen Black had a, um, like a mysterious, like witchy woman look to her. Oh, witchy, woman, witchy woman, black magic woman. Uh, she's a black <laughs> magic woman. But uh, Santana, right? Yeah. yeah. No, but she was unique and uh, uh, became a legend. Typecast, of course, like Linda Blair. You know, couldn't couldn't really go mainstream drama. You know, couldn't. To, could not go over to the other side and was typecast in horror and uh, the same thing goes for adult film stars Tracy Lords can never break out of that typecasting so moment of silence for Karen Black okay um, anybody else famous yeah I do I have that most thing but I was wondering Pass on. Which one do you want? This one or that one? Well, um, it, does it does it contain more info on with the big one? No, it's just with other ones. There's other ones around it. Yeah. Um, in other words, okay. And and of course you wrote from the the newspaper and the date, which was nice of you. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, because it ain't dim anymore when you cut it out. Yeah, you crossed you crossed out a couple things on here. Well, that's the other guy's information. Why do I want it on? Oh mine? no! Oh, okay, I hear you. You know what? That's Alan Green's voice, Cliffside Park. Oh, okay. You know what? Th this you is know? sufficient. Now that's his letter. That simply has other readings. Other letters on. No, no. I'm just concerned about the one you wrote. All right, then I will take this one. Uh, do you have any of your past? No, and I don't even know where the black thing that they're in is. Oh, you, you saved them? Yeah, they're in a black thing. Right. Well, if you come across it, I will not, them. because I don't know where it is. 
But what if you stumble? Well, I will never come across. What if you stumble upon it? I will never, because I have to be looking for it, and I don't know where the hell. I want to put them on the internet. They're too old, and they are no longer in context or relevance. Yeah. Well, well. They are no longer relevant. The only thing that's relevant are the uh, the articles that um, are written about universally. That's correct. Using the universal themes that are applicable today. Today. Like, Still going on like human nature. Like something concerning Republican politicians, you know, taking taking basic necessities away from the poor, you know, uh, uh, things like that, articles Psalm like that. Psalm 10, verse 2. Psalm 10, verse 8. Or is it 9? 8 and 9, let's say, to be safe. Yeah. The... The rich have the poor in their sights. So that's 2,000, uh, almost 3,000 years because, ago. Because, same thing. because in this case, yeah, I wonder, I wonder why the rich had the poor in their sights 2,000 years ago if there was no welfare back then. Because they dislike them. That's the point. Oh, it's like, it's like somebody saying, Oh, I'm not going to live in that neighborhood because I see homeless people hanging out on a corner. It's, you know, it's they 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 treat it like it's sleazy. It's a other, sleazy neighborhood. Other than hobos, there was no such thing as the homeless at a certain time until the 1980s well, under they, Ronald Reagan. Before that, they called them winos. No, but the hobos. numbers were not there. It was just hobos. Freddie the Freeloader, Red Skelton. You know, you catch yeah. a train, you go to uh, Chattanooga. You're talking about uh, Boxcar Willie? Boxcar Willie, yeah. Yeah, well... But there were no numbers of homeless as we see today. They, they, they didn't take it seriously back then. Because it wasn't a serious matter. You didn't have the quantity of homeless so-called hobos out there. There That's wasn't correct. a lot. There wasn't many. That's correct. Well, maybe the Great Depression maybe produced... Well, in the Great Pre the, the Depression, you didn't have to be a hobo to be in a breadline. No. 25% no. of America were unemployed. That means white collars, baby. People lost fortunes, okay. right? Fortunes. They jumped out of windows, committed suicide. Yeah. People lost everything. And at that time, there were no, uh, there were no welfare things or yeah. any kind of social net in place. You know? I mean, you know, starve to death, man. Money, uh, uh, the rich, the rich. I mean, if if any uh, severe economic crisis should happen, the rich can lose their fortunes again. If yeah, well, depend, depending on what they do with their money. Well, obviously, uh, uh, Bible prophecy has it that they will. But, you know. Yeah. The United States is going to go down the tubes. So you know, karma could it's turn there already. Karma could turn around and bite them right on the ass again. <clears throat> well, it's not so much karma, and if you're talking biblical, it's it's prophecy. Yeah. No, I'm talking God's about. Work. I'm talking about the, ex doing. the extremely shallow, materialistic, wealthy that are stingy and greedy. I mean, I mean, it, they can lose what they have. They're they're arrogant about well, why it. Why do you think they? made it so that they would take power over the U.S. government, so that they don't lose it. Okay? True. Not now, I was having a conversation with a friend about uh, people that can afford to have a, to build a bunker, you know, with food and uh, un live underground. So my answer was, if a disaster takes place where you cannot come to the surface of the planet Earth, for a long, long, long time. Eventually, you're going to have to come to the surface when you run out of food and water. So, you know, that's only temporary. These rich people uh, buying mi abandoned missile silos and building these uh, apartments on the ground, condominiums on the ground. You're only as good down there as, you know, what you have in storage and if you're rich enough to have hydroponic gardening 
and and you were able to have electricity to run the, the lamps that's another thing you got martial law up above you got to generate your wouldn't own wouldn't it be just nicer to make the world a better place to live breathe and eat in that would uh, be that would be much easier yeah i think so to make the world for people to to use their brains for more than a hat rack, use their heads for more than, yeah. than just a hat rack, like my grandfather used to say, and actually do positive things uh -huh. for the country and for the planet, and stop trying to screw everybody, and, 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 and think long term instead of short term, like Bill Morrow always says, think long term. Yeah. And he's, I think the first person to write a book about that attitude was the, the old CEO of Sony in Japan he started that whole trend you know he got sick and tired of the of the phrase made well, the in Japanese have always looked well, long he, he got tired of being the, the blunt or the brunt of jokes you know mm -hmm. made in Japan was it was a, was a negative mm -hmm. had a cheap negative crop connotation you know meaning cheap cheaply made and he turned it around completely completely turned it around now American made is cheap crap you know so uh, it's all in the mind is the attitude the attitude that they have uh, a New Jersey judge has sentenced a New York City woman who went topless on the beach for refusing to pay an eight hundred and sixteen dollar fine was she in the designated nude beach area or no Phoenix Feely, better name, made a court appearance what by was? video link. Phoenix Feely is the girl that went topless. Phoenix Feely. Who made an appearance, <laughs> who made an appearance in court oh. by video link from the Monmouth County Jail on Thursday. The Asbury Park Press reported the judge ordered her to spend 12 days in addition to the four that she's already served behind bars. Feely was fined for sunbathing topless on the beach in Spring Lake. Can't do that. That's, a, that's, not, a, that's not a designated nude beach area. She has to go to Sandy Hook, all the way on the end of Sandy Hook. And... Gunnison Beach. For dropping her top after her release in 2008. Can't do that. I, I, know that. I know you can go topless in New York City, believe it or not. An appeals court later dismissed her argument that the town's public nudity ordinance discriminated against women because men are permitted to appear topless. Yeah, but men don't have memories. They have nipples. Feely received a $29,000 settlement in 2007 after she was charged briefly with indecent exposure in New York City in 2005. Yeah, that whole topless thing wasn't around in 2005. The, uh, the women, the feminists were bitching and moaning about... Well, man, wait a minute, they were burning their bra back in the 70s. Yeah, but they were, they did that in Woodstock, didn't they? I don't know where it out they were doing that. They did it. That was the cry, baby. Burn your bra. Burn your bra. You read that thing? That over the shoulder boulder holder? Now, a breast, like a, a buttocks, a butox, or a gluteus maximus, is not a sexual organ, but it is looked upon as, as being very erotic. What can I say? I don't know what to say. All I know is, not many women today do the first job of the breast, which is to feed the young. No, they use formula, which yeah. is not really natural. It's very important for a, a, a newborn to receive the human colostrum found in human mother's milk. 
at least, at least for the first few days or, or a week of life. At least. Because it develops the, 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 the human being's immune system. The baby, the baby's immune system is, is developed at that point in time by the colostrum. Now, a while ago, I saw a video which involved adult breastfeeding. That's a little sick. That's like a fetish. That's like a, like a, a that's, that's, that's crazy. Well, what, you know, I mean, it's, it's, well, how many porn videos, stuff, and things that they do are crazy? Well, I saw on the uh, Latin Telemundo channel, Telemundo. they have a judge from Miami. She's a female, and she's like a, a Spanish Judge Judy, and, uh, but not as, as cantankerous and crabby as Judge Judy, but uh, uh, you know she's a kinder and gentler version. But anyway, there was a uh, a, a mom that was still breastfeeding her uh, um, her her in son that was like in his early twenties. Twenties. He was in his twenties, still breastfeeding. Now that's sick. Well, I know the one on that's time, incest, my the friend. Time magazine. The guy, the kid was four, I believe, and was still breastfeeding. That's 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 way too old for the, 20s. You know, I mean the teeth. When the teeth, when the baby teeth come in, that's that's called weaning, right? Ah. Weaning, getting the mammal, getting the the young mammal off oh. of breastfeeding and onto solid food. Yeah, yeah. That's that's messed up. What I just told you before, but uh, you know, it's uh. There, it's very important for, for a newborn to have the colostrum, so. More than a thousand conservative lawmakers and business executives are gathering this week for a conference that could shape a new wave of Republican legislation in state capitals pushing for deeper tax cuts, limits on union powers, and a private sector makeover for government Medicaid programs. Attendees of the American Legislative Exchange Council, mm -hmm. or ALEC, were countered Thursday by a roughly equal number of protesters upset by the close ties between big businesses and lawmakers. As meeting participants handed out awards and dined at a meal sponsored by the Texas Oil and Gas Association. J.R. Ewing. Picketers denouncing <coughs> corporate greed paced the sidewalks, clogged the street in front of the Chicago Hotel hosting the conference. Critics contend Lawmakers are listening too closely to the corporations that foot most of the bill for the gathering. Bingo! <laughs> Alec writes the laws and hands them to their slaves in government to enact. So when a corporation uh, uh, makes hefty campaign contributions to a, uh, a politician that's running for uh, um, that that won the election. Yeah. Okay. They that wins the election of Congress or Senate. They expect a heavy payback in return to the point where they have the the nerve to write laws and expect them to be passed mm -hmm. by Washington. This is a corporation, a greedy, scumbag corporate CEO that writes laws to benefit the corporation where they expect the government to pass it to, and, to, and to make it a reality. And they do it. 
like extortion. And all the Republican governors, they're doing that right now. It's like Wisconsin, it's like extor Florida, etc. <clears throat> it's like extortion. It's corruption. I give you. It's bribery. Come on, call it what it is. I give you money, you do my bidding. But well, but the politician can always say no thank no, you. No, they can't. <clears throat> They won't be able to run like you what you said before. And Where's the money going to come from? And that's how corruption is in government because of the money. That's correct. Now, if that's what they've a, done, a person like the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, who runs as a progressive liberal independent, when the election times uh, are, are come about, he doesn't have. Uh, a war chest. A war chest. He doesn't. He's not rolling in dough. He doesn't have. He he cannot accept millions of dollars from corporations because he wants to to run honest government the way it should be, and of course the corporations would not like that. So he cannot take donations like that. A person like him and others should be able to run as independents without. <clears throat> the requirement of having a fortune of, of money you know mm -hmm. what I mean and they should be they should get on the ballot and they should be heard just mm -hmm. like anybody else mm -hmm. it is time for low-wage American workers to receive a much deserved pay increase in 1968 the hourly minimum wage was one dollar and sixty cents. Oh God. If it had simply kept pace with inflation, today it would be ten dollars and fifty six cents an hour. About eleven dollars. However about eleven dollars an hour. It's only seven twenty five. Well, this is not this is not news to people. Try living on that. Can't do it. Cannot do it. And, and, well, and, and, and the wages of the CEOs went up. The profits for the corporations went up. On the blood, sweat, and tears of the uh, poor suckers that are getting very little money. And and Paul, and don't forget Cong congressmen and senators. Their wages keep on going up. All right. They keep pace with inflation. Uh, and then some. Remember the Boston Commission back in 95 or 96? It changed the CPI so that Social Security wouldn't have to pay us, the recipients, the correct amount of COLA. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, people uh, living on Social Security or receiving Social Security disability and SSI, they, they received a, a letter stating that their payment will not go up. They will not get the cost of living raise See? in their in their pay, in their monthly payment. Exactly. And that happened for how many years? Two years. Two years it happened. Under Mr. Obama. I'm sure it was the Republican Congress that decided on that. But their salary sure went up. Yes, it did. If the minimum wage kept pace with productivity gains, the capacity to generate income, it would be almost $18.75 today. Yep. I say more like 22. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Just like the unemployment rate is That's much higher. Me. Right. <coughs> if Excuse our me. government makes an announcement that there is a severe terror threat, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, this goes up here, I believe. There we go. If it had kept pace with the wages of the top 1%, it would be more like $28 an hour. See, that's my figure, eh? It's astronomical what the CEOs and the upper echelons of these corporations get. 